Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are again in order to share with you where we stand today with the latest epidemiological situation and, of course, with our vaccine prep preparedness strategy. Now, looking at the situation today within the EU, but uh, also in other parts of the world, and I've had the opportunity to communicate with uh, WHO in the last few days, the COVID-19 numbers are clearly going in the wrong direction. We are watching with great concern an increasingly rapid increase of infection rates across all the EU. And together with the increase of new cases, we are now seeing an increase in the number of hospitalizations, in the number of those cases which are more severe. And unfortunately, we're seeing the increase in the number of fellow citizens who are losing their lives. As Vice President Sinas has very clearly said, we are not where we were at the beginning of the year. We are working closer than ever with member states, and we see, I would dare to say, an unprecedented coordination. Member states seek and want a more active and present role of the EU, even in an area where, as we all know and you all know, our competences are few. But unfortunately, as in every crisis, as at every time of extreme pressure, the situation on the ground is putting our coordination to the test. Measures will only work if they are effectively enforced. And we, the citizens, and I never stop saying this, are really the front line of this effort. So my first message to member states today is one of urgency. We are quickly running out of time. Everyone needs to do what is necessary to avoid the devastating health, social and economic effects of a generalized lockdown. My second message is one of preparedness. We need to be one step ahead of the developments. We cannot afford to be a step behind. And as a commission, this is what we have been doing for the past few months, with recommendations and communications on what needs to be in place for the months ahead. We do not yet have a safe and effective vaccine against COVID-19, but we're doing everything we can to ensure that at least one is produced as quickly and as safely as possible. Vaccination is not going to be a quick fix solution, but it will play a central role in saving lives, in containing the pandemic, in protecting healthcare systems, and in helping to restore our economy. It will provide citizens with a sense of hope and what they also need, predictability in their lives. Importantly, when one and if and when one is found, we need to be prepared to roll it out as quickly as possible. Today, to address the call of EU leaders at the last European Council, we are here to present the key elements of preparedness for successful and coordinated COVID-19 vaccination strategies, to ensure efficient and targeted rollouts once a vaccine is available. What we are asking member states to look at as a priority is first of all that there is the capacity to deliver vaccinations through services in order that we have the necessary staff with the necessary skills and equipment. They need to look at the target populations, which groups should be prioritized. We need to ensure easy access for the target populations. Can everyone afford to get vaccinated and can it be easily accessed? And they need to look at the deployment of vaccines with different characteristics in terms of transport and storage. Can the necessary transport and storage be put in place? This all needs to be in place if and when a safe and effective vaccine is found. And that is why 
we are presenting this to you today. Also of crucial importance for vaccines to truly work is trust. Trust in their safety and effectiveness. Safety and trust go hand in hand. Vaccine hesitancy needs to be addressed as a priority in collaboration with healthcare professionals as trusted sources to fight disinformation and misinformation. And this can only happen if we have frank, open and transparent communication to citizens. So while our experts and scientists are working around the clock to develop a vaccine in record time, they are also working around the clock to guarantee the safety, the efficacy, and the quality of the COVID-19 vaccine. Safety, as Vice President Hinas has said, is our top priority. This is not negotiable, and we will do everything to ensure it. The European Medicines Agency will be conducting an independence and scientific assessment for each vaccine candidate, and once authorized, the safety will be scrupulously and continuously monitored. Rolling data reviews from clinical trials, as you know, have already started. But until we have a vaccine, and also throughout the initial vaccination phase, public health measures must remain our main tool to contain COVID-19 outbreaks. Testing, contact tracing, and preparing healthcare systems are paramount. And this is where member states' focus needs to be at the moment. This needs to be the priority for all governments. I have been calling almost all health ministers to emphasize this over the last few days, to listen, of course, to their concerns and their different situations, but also to stress that these measures need to be uh, in place, measures that we highlighted in our July communication. They remain essential. And, ne and member states need to be fully coordinated in order to move forward with this. Finally, following health advice should be the priority of our citizens, no matter how difficult and tiresome it is. We are all sick and tired of this, but if we don't adhere to measures and if we don't protect each other, we will not be able to fight this pandemic and we will lose loved ones because of it. We need to reach out to different age groups. We need to communicate to different age groups in different ways. We are all part of the solution for this pandemic, and I cannot stress this enough. But we will not be able to turn the tide from one day to the next, even if we have a vaccine. But everyone must be ready. It's not the vaccines that save lives, vaccinations do. Thank you.